All right, guys. Let's just starting to get stuff set up here. Sorry, it was a little uh, a little later than I expected. If anybody has joined the stream here, but just kind of getting stuff set up here this this afternoon. I guess I should probably change the title. This afternoon. I guess I should probably change the title. This afternoon. Turn that off. M9 Aviation, we'll call this Airport Development. And we'll change the category, X-Plane 11, done. All right, um, and for anybody that wants to chat along outside of the chat, I've got a new Discord channel that I set up that people can join or should be able to join. Let's see here. Share. Copy. Paste. Alright, so that's set up there, so anybody that might have joined that, I don't know if, uh, first time I've used the Discord channel, so I don't know how well it'll work, but we can certainly try it. Put that up here. Um, let's see here, so, get over here. getting my OBS set up here so we have everything. I guess I can probably do an audio output capture as well. Speakers. And we want to use the speakers. There we go. All right, so that way when people join the Discord channel, let me turn this down a little bit so I'm not blasting everybody. People join the Discord channel, other people can hear them as well. So it looks like we got one person in here, and I can I never know if that's me or if that's somebody actually watching now. So if you're watching, feel free to join Discord and say hello or say hello via the chat. But uh, my plan this afternoon or this evening, depending on how you look at it or where you're at, could be morning, I guess, for some people. Um, I'm going to do a uh, airport design. So we've got... Um, I fly for an FS economy group called VR Aviation. It's a bunch of guys that, I guess most of them fly using VR, but um, it's a, a pretty cool group to fly. You can find it in FS economy. Just search for VR Aviation. Um, but we have a number of FBOs across the country that, that have been bought throughout the, the months. Um, and we have an East Coast and a West Coast hub. And uh, maybe as we go along here, if I talk more about it, I can put a link up there and kind of show you where they're at. But we have an East Coast and a West Coast hub. And the East Coast hub used to be 33 November, um, Delaware Air Park. And I had done some scenery for that uh, quite a while back, including a custom building. But we uh, have since bought KWWD, or Wildwood slash Cape May Airport in southern New Jersey and made that into our East Coast base. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on some scenery for that. And the group had asked me to take a look at that and see if I could update or, or create some, some better airport scenery there. It does look like somebody had done something in the past or maybe it was auto-generated, so we'll, we'll take a look at that as we go through the process and, and see how much of that we actually want to reuse. Um, I don't anticipate getting through an entire airport design tonight. We'll just kind of go until, until I get bored of it or uh, my wife tells me it's time to stop. <laughs> so, so anyway, so that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, so I guess we can just go ahead and get started. Um, so... Uh, 
just checking a couple things out here. Okay, so to get started, there's a couple of things that, that I end up using right off the bat. The main program that I use for the development is called World Editor, or WED. Um, you can search for that, or if you search for that. Um, uh, sorry, what am I trying to say here? Oh, so if you search for WED, Explain WED, you'll find it. It's an Explain provided utility um, that allows you to do the airport development in two dimensions. Um, as part of that, it comes with the default objects that X-Plane ships with, um, but there are also a ton of libraries out there that you can use to add additional things to your um, to your designs. And then, of course, there are people, I, I've done some of it, build custom objects yourself. That uh, takes a lot more time. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get you know, your airport looking the way you want it to look. I see somebody else might have joined via the, the chat, so again, feel free to say hi or join the Discord channel or try to join the Discord channel. We'll see what happens. Um, so anyway, so I use WED. WED is the primary tool. Um, I guess I should not. I should look at WED. Or I'm kind of at a disadvantage because I moved all my stuff outside since it's a nice night. I only have one monitor, so I'm <laughs> track where everything's at here. Okay, so OBS here. Let's make WED just a little bit bigger for now, and then we'll flip over to using the browser as necessary. I actually have to get on WED. Okay, so typically the way you do it, um, you download WED and you'll start, and, and what WED does is you gotta point it at where your x directory is, and it'll load up all of the airports that you currently have in there, whether they're custom or not. It loads up all of your scenery. It basically reads your custom scenery folder and gives you a list of things that are here. We're going to create a new airport. Um, and even though this airport really isn't a new, new airport, in other words, we're not creating it from scratch, you have to create it as a new airport within your custom scenery folder. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to do custom a new package, and then we'll just name it KWWD, and then... Um, A, just give it a name. Um, once you've done that, you can open it up. All right, now let's see how that scaled in the stream here. I keep forgetting it's a little bit behind. Must have opened up a new window, so let me change that. So we need to go to this guy. That'll make more sense for you. <laughs> and I need to scale it down a little bit. All right, there we go. Okay, so once you've done that, <clears throat> you've created basically the framework within the custom scenery folder to build an airport. Now at this point, if you were building an air a fictitional airport, you could just go to town, right? You'd pick a coordinate, you would go and, and start building whatever you want to build. We're going to cheat a little bit because we can download, at a bare minimum, we can download what's already been done in the scenery gateway. And so to do that, we can just go to File, Import from Airport Scenery Gateway, and what this will do is this going to go out and, and download, it's not downloading each one, but it's downloading a list of all of the airports that X-Plane knows about already and has, has had defined. And once it's done that, we can look for KWWD. So we can go KWWD, Cape May County. And what it does is it shows you the versions of scenery that uh, have already been done. If anybody has uploaded 
uh, a custom scenery to the gateway it'll show here it looks like this is WebBot so this is just what has been generated by default so this is the version that you would see if you just install X-Plane and start flying flying um, I do know that uh, my buddy Bambino he has pointed out that there is a there is somebody has done a kind of a New Jersey scenery and has done some work around KWWD so I think some people have used that in the past and there's a couple buildings on it we're gonna just start with this one here okay so all we're gonna do is just yeah I don't want to uh, <laughs> do a Windows update right in the middle of my uh, of my stream and I don't know for those that are watching is it um, is it buffering quite a bit and kind of skipping Again, I kind of moved my rig outside, and so I'm connected via Wi-Fi, so I'm wondering if the stream is going to be affected a little bit by that. Um, let's see. There was one other thing I was going to look at here. Oh, I won't try to do it while we're in the middle of this, but... Anyway, okay, so we've uh, we've searched for the for the w KWWB. We'll just import the package. Now it's going to actually go out and download the airport or what information it knows about the airport. So you'll see that we do have now we've got an airport. We've got some bit of a a layout there. We've got the runways. We've got the taxiways. We've got some aprons that are showing up. So that'll give us a good start. So. We may just have to modify some of that stuff versus having to create it all manually. So, WED has a couple of different interfaces here, and I'll kind of explain them quickly. On the upper left, this is where you've got all your objects. And again, you can choose from the Laminar library, which is the default, and then if you go down and start looking in there, you'll start to find the different objects that you want. You can also utilize a bunch of different libraries. So I tend to try to use as few few libraries as possible. And in fact, what I've started doing, and I apologize, airplane going over. Um, what I try to do is use as few libraries as possible. Um, one of the big ones is Open Scenery X. It seems like a lot of people use that. so. A lot of times I'll try to use just that library and then I'll put a note in the custom scenery that you have to install that library in order for the scenery to work. A lot of the other ones, if I'm just using one or two objects, what I do is I put those objects in my scenery pack um, and then I just make a note in there that these are used and I copy whatever copyright or use, use licenses that the original author may have had in there as well. Um, it just saves people from having to download a bunch of different libraries. I've seen some custom airports out there where guys have, um, you know, they, they use six or seven different libraries and so the first thing you got to do before you can even use the airport is go and find and download and install those different libraries. So I try to avoid that if at all possible. Um, I don't know, it may get me in trouble at some day, but I do my best to try to make sure that people get credit for the objects that I include in my own airport and uh, and go from there. All right, um, it looks like we've got a couple more people that joined the stream. Again, appreciate you guys checking it out tonight. Um, feel free to hit me up on chat so I know that uh, know that you're here or who you are. Also, at the top of the chat, I, chat, I posted a link. I guess maybe I'll post it again because I don't know that everybody sees it after they join. But I've set up a Discord channel that you should be able to join as well. So if you want to voice chat with me while I'm working away, we can give that a try. Hey, good evening, X X nerd X Ray Jax. I'll just call you X nerd. How about that? Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Okay, so with that out of the way, so we've got a basic uh, airport that's been installed. The next thing we need to do, just so we can, you know, because you can see the background is just kind of a generic green background. The next thing you can do is you can actually download some ortho photo to use as a guide. Now. I do two things. One is I, I download this as a guide because it, it downloads a little bit higher res stuff. And then when I'm all done, I'll actually go down and download Ortho to use as the background. Um, 
just so the area around the airport looks photorealistic. Hey Robo, thanks for uh, joining. Um, so we'll do the first one just to get the references and then uh, you know, depending on how far we get tonight we may or may not do the second piece. So XNerd, you've got a question. That over here. You're learning the sim, but you're having issues with terrains, runways floating and stuff. Crazy. Yeah, that's that's part of the, uh, I think, part of the problem with all of the customization out there is that if, depending on who does the sceneries and, and how careful they are, and then you start meshing custom sceneries with autogen, with HD mesh, with neighboring sceneries, sometimes things can get a little screwed up. Um, you'll see when I go through the, the tutorial here tonight that there is one option that I like to use quite a, uh, well I use on all of my airports it's called flatten airports and um, oh you're running vanilla and you're still getting floating runways or floating terrains hmm that one I don't know I guess I don't know I have an answer for that to be honest with you okay so um, so yeah, back to this. So there's another program that we can use. Um, again, it's I think it's out there on the org. It's called um, I can't remember what it's called. I'm gonna remember, remind myself what it's called. Weto Maker. It's basically a utility that a guy to put together that allows you to go in and download ortho for um, for the area that you're working in as a background. So let's do that. So I'm going to switch over here. Let me put Chrome on top of WED. And let me go over to Weto Maker. So it's a it's a Java program, which I hate anything Java programmed, but you know, hey, that's what a lot of people use. Um, but basically what it does is you install it and it runs a little Java server in the background and then it pulls your, um, you know, opens your web browser up. And so let me see here. I think I did this before I created the airport here. I did, so let me, I'm going to have to quit that and restart it. So it reloads the directory. Reload. Okay, where are you? I'm looking for KWWD. Let me do this. Things never work perfectly when you're, you know, actually trying to do a demo here. Huh. Well, that's strange. Am I just not seeing it? Bert Mooney. Wings demo. Huh. Okay. Well, let's do this. Uh, let's see here. I take off at Brussels EBR and I fly to Zorsal, and it was floating like 100 feet above the grass. Yeah. I know there's some guys that are uh, that may or may not be watching tonight. Um, that do a lot of flying in in Europe, so maybe they can give you some better I ideas on that. All right, let me try this one more time here. Start up my Weto Maker. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I probably haven't saved this airport yet. Okay, so we probably should do that. Let's save the airport and then let's close out of the airport and then then let's try. There we go. Now we have KWWD. Okay, so you just tell it which uh, which airport you want. Oops. I 
think because I'm running uh, over Wi-Fi here and not plugged in, it's taking a little bit of time to load stuff in addition to the stream that's running. Start back playing do routers. Oh. <laughs> strange, strange. Yeah, I'll uh, as we go through, I'll point out where you could change it if you wanted to. You'd have to do it as a custom custom airport, but yeah, I can talk to you about that. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go back to Wedemaker. Okay, so once it loads it up, you know you don't need. This is just for reference purposes. So what you want to probably do is just frame it in such a way that it's capturing what you want. You don't need a lot of area around it because again if you want to do that in the future you can uh, you're going to probably come back and do ortho underneath anyway. Okay so once you've got that then you can choose the detail. I use zoom level 18 for these and then you just click make visible and wed. What it's doing behind the scene is it's going and it's downloading all of the tiles for each uh, uh, for this. It doesn't take too long and then once it's done we'll be able to open up wet again and and uh, see how that worked out. All right. Let's check. I don't know if any is any if any of you guys tried to join the Discord channel. People don't like to chat with on voice wise, but feel free to if you'd like to try give it a try. I'll post the link here again. Yeah, Robo, I set up I set up my own Discord channel just so I didn't feel like I was um, using somebody else's discord channel <laughs> when I did streams I know there's enough of them out there now that you could choose pick and choose but it's easy enough to set up your own all right I see you joined I'm in the general voice channel if if you want to join there okay so let's check out wed again I know I'm jumping back and forth here because I'm trying to accommodate people as I can here. So, what maker? Okay. So, it's finished downloading and it gives you that nice er uh, message there. So, that can go away. So, I'm going to go back over here to WED now. Put WED in the top. And I'm going to reopen. Find it here. It's moved it. Reopen Wildwood. And I suppose I gotta change the that should be it. I do live in center city, center city Philadelphia, so if you hear the sirens in the background, that's a pretty normal pretty normal evening here in the inner city of Philadelphia. Alright, um why are you not showing me? Trying to make sure you guys are seeing the actual airport. There we go. Okay. Gonna resize so it kind of fits there for you guys. Okay. So now, from so for the most part, we'll end up just uh, staying in wed from here on out. Um, but you see now that we have a background and all of these all of these squares are the tiles that it actually downloaded but you see now we've got a background that we can work up, work against to try to put uh, different pieces of scenery in all right 
Okay, so usually uh, a couple of things that I like to do then right off the bat. Again, we've got our library pane over here. I guess I started talking about this and didn't get very far. Sounds like the sirens are coming closer. But uh, we've got the library pane here that gives you all of the objects that we'll start to use. Um, down below is kind of a preview. So what you can do is if you want a, if you want a particular object, Let's just pick one for reference. You know, if I want to put in a, a prop, it'll show you and you can right click on it and rotate around it so you can get a good idea of what the, the object itself looks like. Objects it does pretty good at, there are elements called facades that you can also use that are kind of hit and miss um, on what you actually see. Like for these, these for some reason don't work. But it gives you, anyway, you get a preview there so you kind of get an idea of what you're doing. Here's the main screen. Of course, that shows you what you're working on. That's where you're actually doing the work. And over here in the kind of the menu bar here, this is kind of a quick and dirty for a lot of the common objects that would you, you would use, like runways and taxiways and taxi lines and stuff like that. Um, on this side is the uh, browser pane or not browser pane, the, the hierarchy pane. And so this shows you kind of in a folder type arrangement all of the elements that are in this airport. And it's kind of important that you pay attention to some of this stuff. You know, there, there's some predefined categories. I'll create new categories as I go along. Um, but the order of it really matters, right? So anybody that's, that's done custom scenery or loaded up ortho or custom airports, you know, you know, you always have to worry about your scenery.ini file. File, um, in order to get the order or the layers correct, it's much the same in custom airport development, right? You've got to get make sure your layers are 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 set properly. So, for instance, you probably actually want taxiways. You want runways over top of taxiways, right? So that the taxiways will um, be under the runway. You want your markings above everything so that you know your lines are, are where they need to be. So, so anyway, so you got to kind of pay attention to that. And it also gives you a good way to group things together. So if you want to shut something off, turn something on, you can do that, or you know whatever whatever you want to do in terms of groupings. And then the the lower pane down here is just the it's information about whatever object you happen to have picked. So if I choose the oops. I want to do that. If I choose the runway, for instance, then I'll get the information about that runway. Choose the taxiway, it'll show me the information about the taxiway. So that's kind of the lay of the land of WED. Um, again, this isn't meant to be a tutorial on how to use WED so much, because I'm, I'm certainly not an expert. There are probably lots of videos or lots of people out there that can do a better job of explaining each and every detail of WED, but you know, if you follow along, I'll probably hit most of, of what you end up using uh, in WED. All right, so once we've kind of got that, there's a few things that I do right off the bat. So just starting at the top, if you click on Cape May, Cape May County, there's some details here that I typically go in and check and just make sure they're correct. Um, you know, the field elevation, this is what you were asking about, XNerd. Um, you were asking about how you could reset the field elevation. Um, if you kind of follow this process and load whatever airport up that you want, create a custom airport out of it, then you can modify the field elevation right here. So um, the other thing I'll do is I'll go and I'll reference Sky Vector. And let's see here. Let's. Oops. I'll do that. Just pull that up here so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. So if I go and search for KWWD, and you can use whatever program you're familiar with, you know, ForeFlight, if you got an app, if you want to use ForeFlight, or if you want to use SkyVector or AirNav, you know, anything doesn't really matter. The point is, is that I like to do is go and get the, the airport details so that I know that I'm creating it as close to realistic as possible. It says the elevation is 21 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. It's 22 feet. And let's see here. How can I do this? Let me shrink this down here. 
Yeah. I'll just keep moving up, up and down as we go. Okay, so what I do is change the elevation to 21 feet. And, you know, once I'm done with the airport and I'm doing kind of a quality check or, you know, going and just making sure everything looks right, if it looks weird, I can always come back here and adjust it to a different altitude. Um, if this airport has ATC, you can turn that on. Um, this one does not, so we'll leave that off. We've got the airport identifier was always set. I choose always flatten. Um, that helps with a couple of things, although it can create some undesirable side effects. Um, basically what that does is it it says everything within the outline of what's considered an airport and that's this green line over here um, this green line is kind of the airport outline what it does is everything within that line it creates it level flat at 21 feet um, it's useful because otherwise you have to start going in let's say your airport slopes down and let's just you know we'll take an extreme example let's say it slopes down 10 feet from here to here if you place a building just place a building over here um, it'll be 10 feet in the air because it's unless you go and manually adjust it up and down and so it's a little easier from a development standpoint to just flatten the run to the airport so that you don't have to worry about individually adjusting buildings um, and then it helps with the terrain too so if you stick it in a terrain area that's got some terrain it kind of flattens it out it's kind of a personal preference for me but that's what I that's what I end up doing okay so we've got that um, and then it filled in a lot of this stuff a lot of times this stuff isn't all filled in so I have to come in there and fill it in but it's all filled in we've got the city co country state um, I don't know what region codes and transition altitudes are. I've always seen them 18,000, and I don't know what the region code is. Maybe that's something that explain um, sets. But anyway, so I just make those few changes right on the actual top-level directory. And I make sure to save it periodically because, as we all know, you save often, right? <laughs> anything Windows. I'm a Mac user, so, and this is a Windows machine. Anything Windows, you always save often. Okay, and then uh, the next thing I'll do is just kind of go through some of this stuff like ATC, right? So it's been predefined with a few things, so it's got an a AWOS. So let's just make sure that there actually is an AWOS at this airport. So again, I'm looking at Sky Vector. I'm going to make it a little big bigger here so I can see what's going on. I guess I should probably let you guys see it as well. So we have um, down here, we've got an, uh, so there is no AWOS at this airport. There are AWOSs near this airport. So, oh, no, I'm sorry. Here it is up here at the top. AWOS 3, 118275. So if I go back in here, 11827, I don't think it lets you put in the, the last digit. Okay, so that's correct. We do have a common traffic of frequency 122.7. I'm just going to just look at that quick rather than switch you guys back and forth. So that's correct. Clearance and delivery is 121.7, and that's set correctly. And then approach and departure, um, 124.6. 124.6. Okay. So all of the frequencies are set, and of course this is important, so when you actually load up the airport, if you want to listen to AWOS, you know, that has to be there, and this will then generate the automatic um, automatic weather information. The rest of them aren't probably quite so important. Maybe they're important uh, if you're doing, like, uh, um, live ATC or something like that. Okay, so we get ATC out of the way, and then the rest of this stuff um, we'll just kind of check as we go. This has PAPI lights at uh, both ends of both runways. So again, in, on uh, using Sky Vector, if I look at the runway information, we have runway 0119 and 1028, and we'll, we'll double check some of this stuff. 
as we go, but we have P4Ls, which are Pappy 4 lights, 3 degree glide slope, P4L 3 degree, P4L 3 degree, P4L 3 degree. All right, so all Pappies are 4 light um, Pappies at 3 degrees, so I just double check those. Zero 01 is a Pappy. You can choose which side of the runway you want. We'll leave it on the left. And the angle is 3 degrees. Pappy 3 degrees, Pappy 3 degrees, Pappy 3 degrees. Okay, so the Pappies are correct for now. Markings, um, I'm not going to go through those, but those are all of the uh, taxiways. We'll kind of look at that as we start building, uh, start getting into the, the meat of it. Um, ramp starts, there's a couple that are defined. We'll add those a bit later. We'll add some more. Runways is the next thing I'm going to check. So we've got two. We've got 0119 and we've got 1028. Again, order matters because they are crossing runways. So you got to define which one you want over top of each other. I don't know. Um, I've, I've flown into this airport once in real life. And I don't remember which is the primary runway or which is the... seems like one of them is much newer. And so it probably overlays. We'll just assume it's this one. <laughs> Okay, so we've got that. Um, let's see here. Where, what am I looking at? Oh, you guys are still looking at the browser. Sorry about that. Just check my Twitch. See what you guys are saying there. Sky Rector rounds things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why if you... Uh, flattening kind of helps because it really doesn't matter what level you put it at as long as you're close. But you're right. It, if you start to see problems... You probably do want to go and get the actual, you know, down to a decimal type uh, thing. So Bambino has joined. Cool. Thanks for joining, Bambino. Yep. KWWD. I figured I would go ahead and do a stream on that. Get it. Get that project kicked off. <laughs> well, you know, you're on here tonight, Robo. So. Oh, you're at Bam you're talking to Bambino, sorry. Okay, great. Um, let's see what else. Oh, that's right. I'm a man of many talents. You're flying in real life, flying in the VR, creating airports, doing eye racing. If only I had time for real work, right? Okay. So anyway, so enough of the chatter here. We'll get back to the. <laughs> I'll check it from time to time. Um, Bambino, I did start up a Discord channel, so if you want to try to join that, feel free to. Nobody's nobody's taken me up on the uh, the offer to join the chat yet. Okay, so anyway, so back to the runways. Um, okay, you guys are looking at my browser. You don't want to see that. You want to see this. All right, so I just double check this. Right, so we've got dimensions are 49. So well, let's go up here to runway 119. They're 52, 52 by 150 feet. Let's see, is this in feet? Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that, 50-52, and we'll, we'll do some fine-tuning here in a second. 50-52 by 150. And as Robo pointed out, that could, be, that could have been more correct, but we can fine-tune that in a second. Um... We've got edge lighting. Uh, I know this is a. I wish there was a way I could. Maybe I'll try this. Let me. I know I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Let me put this up here for now, so I don't have to keep switching back and forth. Because I'm going back and forth between. What's up, dude? Oh, hey, Bambino. Thanks for joining. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at. Actually, in the uh, DA62 flying up to the Poconos oh, yeah. <laughs> in VR, right? Oh, there you yeah. go. <laughs> watching you, watching you create an airport is pretty cool. Let's talk, talk about multitasking. Cool. Well, thanks for joining. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, so on this airport, so or on this runway, so I'm just doing double checking the the length was 5252. Sorry, so I got that wrong. 52. 52 and then the width was 150 and I think I got that right 150 okay great 
Uh, edge lighting is high intensity, so you can come down here and find edge lights, and HIRL is high intensity. So we've got that set. And then the elevation, again, we, you know, this one actually does have quite a bit of slope, um, but we set the entire airport at 21. I guess I set it at 21. I should have set it at 21.7. So let's go back and do that quick. It's really just pick an altitude and stay with it, right? Kind of like flying. It doesn't matter if you're assigned 3,500 so or not. Just pick one. What is this app that you're using? What's this app that you're using? Um, so this is WED. Uh, okay, uh, WED. Okay. Yeah, WED. Yep. I think there is another one that you can use that some people use to do it, but I use I use WED. Gotcha. Okay, and then runway heading. So it's true, I think, is the one that you use, 00 or 180. So let's see which one it's got here. Uh, heading is 359, so we could just say 0. I'm going to fine-tune this in a second anyway, but we'll go through that. Um, runway 19 has a displaced threshold of 215 feet. So what we'll do is we'll go down here, and it doesn't... Um, I think it corresponds to 01 and 19. This is runway 1. This is runway 2 when you get down to this area here. So we're going to go displaced threshold on runway 19 is 215 so let's try that displaced threshold for number 2 215 5 that added it down here okay and let's see here what else do we have so we have non -precis precision instrument on both ends so we can set that uh, where is that markings non-precision non-precision instrument so we'll just set that to non-precision US it was already set that way and then markings for number two is also non-precision okay so we're good there we already looked at the pappies those are good and the obstacles we won't worry about so that kind of gets you the that gets you the by the book numbers for the runways. We can do the same thing with 1028 quick. Oh, and it is an asphalt runway. You can choose what type of runway, asphalt, concrete, grass, dirt, gravel, all of that sort of stuff. And then you can also, if you want to set a shoulder, you can put a shoulder on there. I've not found that that does much of anything, but you, you can set it if you try. You can also set the roughness. So I usually set this to 0.25 just to give it a little bit of roughness because no runway is perfectly smooth. And then if it's a, a larger airport, you can put center line, center line lights on there. Um, you can put distance signs down the runway if you want. I don't think this airport has them, so we're leaving them off. We talked about thresholds. Touchdown lights, um, I don't think this really tells you if it has. Sometimes it tells you, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I usually put them there just because it makes it easier to find the end of the runway. So I do touchdown, uh, not approach lights. Touchdown zone lights. I'm sorry. Here we go. Runway end identifier lights, rail lights. I do... Uh, I'll do omnidirectional on these, and we'll do that on this one too, omnidirectional. Okay, so that does that for 1.9 for 10.28. We do the same thing, 49.98 by 150. So we'll go back to the top, 49 by 150. Asphalt, we got media intensity, edge lighting, and it's 9270. So we'll just set that to 90. And edge lights is medium intensity. Okay, we're good there. non persistent instrument and then basic all right so runway 10 
which I guess would be the first one in this list. So one way 10 has non-precision US. The other direction has basic or visual. So we'll do that. We did the pappy and then we don't worry about that. So then we'll just go back here to make sure that we've got, we're not gonna do distance, center line, no displaced thresholds, approach lights. We'll go ahead and put rails on there. Okay, sounds like a good time to save, <laughs> just to make sure. Okay, so let me go back to get rid of the chrome because I don't think we'll need it. So hopefully that's, people are tracking along here. Let me just check <coughs> comments to see if anybody has any questions. The only shuttle's runway was perfectly smooth. Yeah, no kidding. So one of the other projects I'm working on is uh, there's an airport. It's the um, Spaceport America. It's out in it's out in Nevada, hmm. but it, they built it for Virgin Galactic, and it's it's, it's uh, not being used. <laughs> they basically spent a bunch of money and built this airport out in the middle of nowhere that's really not being used. So, but it's got a really cool building. So I'm actually kind of working on that building and plan to build that and put it out there too, just in case anybody wants kind of a cool, interesting place to go to. That's cool. Yeah, this should be kind of fun. <laughs> okay. Once you, so once, you, once, you, once, you, once you learn, you know, once it's like, you know, the, 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 the projects are never ending, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the opportunities to create are never ending. Well, exactly. I mean, there's, yeah. you know, since I've started doing this, a lot of people have come to me and asked for, you know, custom airports or custom buildings. Yeah. Um, and then even when people aren't asking me, there's, you know, I'm always finding something that's like, well, you know, hey, I could just put a little bit of time into that. And yeah, yeah. but, you know, it gives me something to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, now that we've got the runways there, the thing we can do then is we can go in and really see how this matches up to what's, what's there in the ortho. And then typically I'll adjust it to that. So, Right now you can't see what's under there, but if you go over to view and do object uh, pavement transparency, and you can do 25%. So now you can still see the outline of stuff, um, but you can see what's underneath it. So interestingly enough, you know, stuff does not match up here with the numbers that we put in. So not sure why that might be, but we're gonna make it match the picture. So what you can do then is just grab this thing and move it down here. And in fact, it doesn't look like it said that we had a hundred some or 200 foot displaced threshold. That looks more like it's probably about 75 feet. So I'm gonna go back up to runway one nine and change that. Uh, where are you? Displaced, let's try 75 and see what that gives us. That's nah, pretty close, I'm gonna do 80. <laughs> Maybe 85. Yeah, so you can zoom right in and you can, uh, again, you can kind of set it to match what's uh, in the ortho. I'll go down to the other end because it looks like the heading is a little wrong. All right. So that takes care of that runway, and then we can take the same look at this runway here. Let's see what it's doing. Yeah, it looks like we can probably... So you can see a little bit here from using the ortho. You can see that this runway is quite a bit older, or looks quite a bit older than this runway, I think. Let me go and do my pavement transparency none. Yeah, you can see how this is a darker asphalt, so this must be the newer runway. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that that one is on top, which it is. And then actually you could probably, um, we could leave that one at 0.25. Maybe this runway will set the roughness at 0.45 maybe. Just to give it a little bit of difference. Now again, if you're a, if you're a hardcore guy and you want a girl and you want to do this sort of stuff, there are textures that you can overlay on this that give you the cracked runways and the, and uh, you know, worn runways uh, again. I that's just way too much for me. So, 
<laughs> I'm going to skip that part. Okay, so let's get this guy lined up. All sorts of stuff going on here in the background tonight. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so once that's lined up, that kind of takes care of the runway portion. And then typically the next thing I got to do is go in and look at the taxiways. So you'll notice that when I moved the taxiways, that moved things around. So we got to kind of adjust that. Again, you want to make sure your taxiway uh, grouping is below your runway so that you can do things like this. You can take this and move... What did they do here? Wait a second, what is this? Well, that's airport line marking. Why did they do that? That's kind of wacky. All right, well, I'm going to delete that because I don't know why that's there. And I actually get to the, I got to turn my pavement transparency up a little bit so I can actually find that. Why did that do that? That's interesting. Alright, I'm just trying to figure out why... what the autogen did here. Typically this is a... it's a defined as a taxiway and then you set the taxiway... you set light or you set the uh, light attributes to the taxiway. looks like that's not what happened here. Huh. Let me undo It remembers everything you click on so when you start undoing you gotta go back. Okay, there we go. All right, so this was just mislabeled. It said it was a airport line marking, but it was actually the taxiway. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we can just grab our, although it's still weird that these are two different. All right, we're gonna do this the hard way. We're gonna get rid of it all. We'll start over. This is good because it'll let you kind of see how to draw a taxiway. Okay, so what you do um, when you're drawing objects like this is you, is you, it's made up of a bunch of vertices is what it is. And those vertices can either be corners or they can be curves of different types. So I typically do a quick, um, I kind of do a rough sketch of things and then come back and adjust it, right? So what we can do is we can go over to our menu over here let me just make sure you guys are actually seeing what I'm seeing. Okay. You go over to the menu and you can actually pick um, Taxiway. Taxiway Tool, which is the third down on the right. Hey, thanks, Joel, for joining. Appreciate it. There is a uh, Discord channel if you feel like uh, joining that as well. Put the link in there. But. Okay, so what we can do is we can pick, set, pick that taxiway tool and then we can just quickly do a, a rough outline. So you just click, click. We're going to go down here. Let's see here. We'll just click here, here. I know I'm going to need something here, so I'll just kind of click on that. I'm just putting, putting vertices where I know I'm going to want to have some curves and some straight lines. going on down here? Looks like somebody was drunk when they put this taxiway together. <laughs> Ooh, that's a straight line. Throw me another beer, Joe. <clears throat> okay, and you gotta close it, right? So at the end you gotta, oops, you gotta click on the, uh, the one and close it. Okay, so once you've got your, your kind of your rough outline, then you can go and you can start fine-tuning it. And just to put the lights back, because we'll be clicking on some of these things. When you click on that taxiway, you'll see that one of the attributes, you see it's now a class taxiway. Before it was just a line class for some reason. 
but you can choose things about it. So we can choose the type. We want this to be asphalt taxiway. You can choose the roughness as well. So let's make it 25. The texture heading, it's usually more um, useful. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Transparency 50. Oh, this is, sorry. Um, one word of note, you can't cross vertices because then it screws your, your uh, thing up. I'm actually going to get rid of this extra dot. There we go. So you can see the texture is heading north, kind of north-south, so that's fine for what we're doing. But if you want kind of things to align or if it makes more sense to have your pavement or your concrete going in one direction, you can change that texture heading. So if I were to set this to 45, oops, not 456, 45, you'll see now the texture is heading in that direction. So you can do that. When I do the VR aviation building, a little later on when I create the, usually I put that on a concrete apron and I like to make sure that the concrete apron is nice and square to the building. So that comes in handy. Um, and then line attributes. These are lines on the outside of the runway. They're not the taxi lines, so I could set a solid yellow line or whatever type of line. A lot of times taxiways don't have lines on the outside, but they do have lights, right? So we're going to do taxiway edge lights blue. And you can choose, you know, center line green, hold short lines. You can choose all of these options, right? So we're going to set that to blue. So a couple of things you probably noticed when that happened is now we, we have taxi lights around the edge of the runway, or the taxiway, but now we have taxi lights in places we don't want. So these vertices all have uh, things you can do with them, and I think it has something to do with the way you wrap, and I think we built this counterclockwise. And so what you can start to do is you can go into these vertices, and I think it's this one because we built it counterclockwise, and you can choose just that vertice, and choose none and then that gets rid of the taxi lights in that little area so what we want to do here is because the taxiway is under well it will be when we put it in taxiway the taxiway is under the runway you can kind of overlap a little bit and it's a good idea to do because if you really try to get it perfect you can end up with a little bump there when you taxi over it because well, X-Plane interprets this as different elevations, so I overlap them a little bit. Some objects, or most objects, you can actually join vertices together, and there's actually a snap to vertices up here in the upper left-hand corner. You just can't, you can't create vertices on runways, so runways is the one place you kind of have to overlap them. So. so I try to at least get them close, at least on the end, but overlap a little bit. Then what you can also do is because you don't want everything kind of squared off like this, you can start creating curves. And the way to do that is you can hold the the Alt key and select and pull uh, pull down, and this turns this guy into a little uh, curvature tool. So you can start to uh, add curves to your model. Now. I don't want that curve going all the way back here, so what I can do is I can add another vertice in the middle, and there all you do is click on shift and click. Uh, actually, you gotta get, get in there and get on the edge. Come on. Well, sure, yeah. Just just click on it, Brad. Just click on it. It'll work. No worries. not letting me do it. Typically you can just add another vertice in here. Oh. Come on. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> 
guess I haven't done one of these long enough. It's actually alt click is what gives you that other vertice. And so there are a couple of different kinds. There's these kinds here that you can actually choose the direction you want it to be. And then there's these statics, which are just, you know, they're just point to point. You can change them, supposedly, hmm. after they've been there. And I've never been, ma I've never mastered getting them to change the way I want them to change. Something about control clicking or shift clicking. So if I'm having a problem, I'll typically just delete them and add them again. All right. So before I get too far into it, I'll add one here and one here because we want those to kind of be the edges of our curve. And then I'll click and pull down and create my curvature. You know, this you can you pull this in and out and that def defines your radius, I guess, and then you can set your position. So, it looks like the taxiway is about here. So, we'll kind of do this. Something along these lines here. And you can spend a lot of time trying to get these curves right. I don't spend. I got to scoot, Brad. This I have to scoot, man. This was really interesting. It's giving me the, the, the it's giving me the jolt to maybe check this out. It's pretty cool. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for the demo. Okay. Be careful what you wish for. I know. I, just, <laughs> I don't want to dive into it. I'm like kind of just sticking with liveries. Those are manageable, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, right, thanks a lot, man. Yeah. We'll thanks. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Later. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just setting this uh, vertice up so that I can click the hold short line to it. And then we can do the same thing on the inner circle. Alt and pull down. And that'll give you a bit of a curvature and then you can adjust that to somewhat match what's, uh, what's there. I don't know why this, uh, it looks like they made this end of that taxiway just a little bit fatter. Uh, we want to do this one over here as well. And again, you got to be a little careful because as you extend that out, it extends the radius past your vertice. And so when that disappears like that, you know, you've gone too far. So you got to just be careful that you don't, uh, you don't overlap your vertices. We'll add a little bit of a curve in the middle there. Actually, it looks like this could come down a little bit further. And then this guy. That's probably close enough for now. A lot of times I just do stuff kind of, I do it reasonably quick and dirty and just to kind of get the shape there and then I'll come back after the fact as well and kind of tweak things up. But let's get this taxi line kind of out of the way. So the taxi line was an existing object, so we'll just reposition it so it's where, roughly where the taxi line shows. strange that that taxi line is crooked too at that end but maybe we'll you know we don't have to follow exactly because again remember this ortho was just here for guidance it's not actually going to be seen so it's probably better to actually get that positioned in the center so it looks right when you load this up in x-plane versus uh, having something that looks a little wacky Kind of weird how they how that 
came together. Okay, so let's see here. I think I'll probably come back and adjust that later on too. But So I'm just going to adjust this because it's fatter down here. I just want to make sure that it's toward the center of the taxiway down in this area. Let me turn those lights back on. Blue, there we go. Uh, and I need to then go and shut them off in the overlapping areas. Alright, and we'll come down here. Let's see here. Is there any other vertices in that taxiway? It does not look like it, so we can adjust stuff down here. Get it in the center of the uh, taxiway at this end. We want to do the same thing here. We want to overlap a little bit into the runway. Have to be a lot. And we want to shut the lights off there. Not sure where I, why I put this one in here. So we'll get rid of this dot. So the, typically the way I do my curves is I do a, kind of the out point here in both places and then you've got the curve in the middle. So add a little curvature there, add a little curvature here. So quite honestly the, the worst part about these airport designs is getting these curvatures right. And it's not just the taxiways here, it's these all the taxi lines and stuff like that. It's the biggest pain in the ass there is. <laughs> Getting those right. Kind of looks like the uh, taxiway gets a little wider here too. that one. We'll do this one here. Make sure that this is the out point. Alright, the taxiway looks good, so let's go ahead and let's see, where is the hold short on this runway? It looks like the real runway. I am screwing this up again up here now. Just looking to see where the real one runway puts those hold short lines. Actually, it looks like it's more about here. And down here on this guy, yeah, it looks like it's about there. Was there another one? Okay, that's fine. Turn my transparency back up so I can see the taxiway and then what we can do is you can again you can add vertices so if I alt click there and here then I have something to snap this to and since these runways are pretty well aligned I like to make sure that they're kind of straight up and down because I'm just kind of picky that way all right, so we got our hold short line there, up here. We probably should add one there as well. Some vertices to click to. Okay, we've got those set, so have I lost anybody? I actually gained people. Wow. Figured I would be boring boring enough droning along here that people would leave. Well, I'll put the Discord channel in here again just in case new people joined. You want to join there. Okay, so let's see. Where were we? So we got this guy down here set. Let's get him perfectly vertical. 
Then we got to adjust the taxiway lines again. So sometimes you got to kind of zoom in and out because if I zoom out it looks like that line's right in the center but when I zoom in it looks like it's off to the left a little bit so we'll just go down here and move them over a tad bit and then on that taxi line itself we want to create a vertus so that we can attach these lines and again, if you don't do this, then what happens is your taxi lines, you may look like I could probably put this like this. And from this point, it probably looks like they're connected. But when you get an X-plane and you start taxiing, you're going to see that clear, clear as day, that those lines aren't connected and they're kind of off kilter. So it's always a good idea to create a vertice, or vertice, whatever you attach them. So then that X-plane will naturally blend those two together. This is a really weird way that this curve was created. But just adjusting that a little bit to kind of give it a more natural curve and match a little bit what's on the runway. And over here we got to do the same thing. Get the set up. Okay, so we've got that. Now we'll get down to the bottom end here. And I could probably, let's see here, are these guys, yeah they are, so let's do this. Let's get rid of these. Never did figure out what or why these lights were put there the way they were. But we can uh, then just extend our taxiway because our taxiways are below the runway. We can just extend that below the runway and then get rid of the extra lights that are in the middle. So we do have a curve here. And we'll try to line it up. Oops. Try to line it up on this side of the runway. Get that curve back over here. Get him over here like this. And then remember, because of the way we wrap this counterclockwise, I can choose this one down here and shut the lights off. So we don't have lights going across the runway. And in fact, now, let's see, we're going to have to do this. Add some more vertices here, too. So we'll add one, two, three. Three. And we'll add three down here. One, two, three. So that we can create a bit of a curve up here. Overlap the runway a little bit. Get the inside of the curve and then the outside of the taxiway. do that here as well. Doesn't help that all these lines are in the wrong place. Now, depending on what source you use, again, if I'm, I'm using that Weto Maker, I think it uses, I don't know if it uses Bing. I don't know what source it uses to pull down this background image. I have noticed, though, that if you, you can you can download those images and you can align everything to that and then if you go and you do ortho from a different source stuff doesn't line up um, so you know the images aren't necessarily always completely positionally accurate so you gotta, gotta take it all with a little grain of salt okay so let's see this guy can come down here a little bit 
We got the inside of the curve, the outs, crossing the runway, crossing the runway, the inside of the curve, and the outside of the curve. <clears throat> so this one, to get rid of these lines across this runway, we've got to choose the top one because it's always the one before. Again, depending on how you wound your your uh, texture, it's the one before the things you want to get rid of. So we can click none, and that gets rid of that. Try to get this close to the edge so we don't have taxi lights out on the runway. And then let's just do our curves. Sometimes it's a little hard, even that we did zoom level 18, but sometimes it's a little hard to determine exactly where the edges are. So, yeah, and it doesn't, it's really just a guide. A lot of times I get way too carried away with it, but it's just a guide. It really just matters getting it to look halfway decent so that when you load it up in X plane, it doesn't look like some, you know, a three year old did it. Not, that I, not to say that people's three year olds can't do this kind of stuff. Not, not at all implying that. All right, let me just take a quick break here and check Discord and see if anybody's had anything to say. No. Nope. All right. Okay, so, um, you know, I know that watching me do, uh, do lines and curves is probably not the most interesting and entertaining thing. I think you get the idea of, of how you do that, and it's the same whether you're doing taxiways, you're doing taxi lines, anything that has curves, you kind of do it in the same way. You draw it out kind of in a rough manner, and then you go back and you can add the curves later. So I'll kind of stop that for now because I could do that all night. Nobody wants to watch me do that all night. But let's talk about a couple other things here. So um, let's look at some let's look at some objects. So what is this, an airport beacon? Well, let's move him out of the way. Let's move him down where he probably should be. Same way with the, the uh, windsock. <clears throat> so it looks like, for whatever reason, that Wildwood has two windsocks. So we're going to just put the windsocks in the circle. There is an image here that you can use for this. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now because <clears throat> when I start using custom objects, I, I have to do a little bit of manipulation behind the scenes to get them into my package. But there is one of the libraries contains one of these segmented circles that you can put in there. So we can come back and do that later. But let's put some objects in so you guys can kind of see what objects look like. So um, by default, we've got some... Well, I'll just put some stuff in here. So let's just, for instance, let's talk about this hanger right here. So, so let's say we want to put a hanger in. Um, what you can do, what I typically will start with is the laminar library because, again, I like to make sure that it's as easy as possible for people to download and install this scenery, and I don't want them to have to, to install a whole bunch of uh, libraries. So what I'll do is I'll choose the laminar library over here in the upper left. And then um, in that library, um, airport, um, bum, 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 common elements, hangers. So I usually start here. Um, there's a pretty good, um, there's a reasonably good selection of built-in uh, hangers. And so I'll go and I'll look and I'll find something like what I would think would be there. Now, one of the tools that I can use or do use, and we can try it here, is just go to Google, either go to Google Earth or go to Google Maps. So let's go to maps.google.com. And let me bring that up so you guys can see it. And if we just go to Cape May, 
May, New Jersey. Now what you do is you start getting into all of the tools that you can use to try to figure out what stuff should look like. Um, here's the Cape May Airport. And as you guys know, you can click on the little guy and get a street view. So let's try that and see if we happen to find anything there that would indicate what kind of hangar is at the airport. So this looks like it's maybe got a lot of windows in it. It's got the hangar facing this way. So if you're trying to get it to look, you know, I try, I try to get it to look reasonably close if I can. Um, sometimes you just can't find hangar objects that look. But anyway, so that's kind of what we're looking for is something that looks like this. So if I go back into WED, move this above here. So what we can do is we've got this airport here. Um, this this hangar here it probably doesn't look exactly right, but just to get an idea, you can just click on it. Um, once you've got it highlighted over here, we'll do a gray one, you can click on it. So this gives you at least something, um, and it gives you some sizing perspective. So this is a large one. You could do a medium one, which looks a little bit too small for that one, but it might be useful in one of these other buildings. And then they also have a small one that you could use. So once you place it, it's going to have this little uh, four, four cornered thing here. That's the to move it around and adjust it. So if you click in the center, you can move it. If you click on one of these little arrows and drag them, then it gives you some ways to rotate it and align it. So that's the way you do that. So if I were to just take this one, pretty sure that the by looking at the large gray hanger, this little bump out is the back side, so that's up here. So I'm going to grab, oops, I don't want to do another one. Um, one other little gotcha with using WED is that if you're going to manipulate, you always have to make sure to click on the little arrow, otherwise it just does, it places another object. So anyway, so I've got this, I can take it and I can rotate it around and place it here. So for quick and dirty, I mean you could do that. That would get you a hanger there that probably wouldn't look out of place. It's not going to look exactly like the hanger that's there, but you could do that. Um, this particular one, I'm going to put our um, VR Aviation logo in there. So if I go down and choose my VR Aviation library, you know, I'm going to put that somewhere in here. And then I'll mock, it, mock up, you know, what that looks like. So that's how you can place buildings. Now again, if you use the Laminar library, I mean, there's there's a lot of things in here. There's hangars, you can go to classic airports, and there's control towers. I mean, there's a lot of pre-built objects. Um, a lot of times, though, in, in order to find something that really matches, you have to go in and use some of these other libraries. So, you know, if we go to Open Scenery X, you can start seeing objects, airport, buildings, hangars. Um, my Open Scenery X doesn't seem to have a lot. Maybe it's in buildings, airports, hangars. There we go. Uh, metal. All right, so you've got a number of other places that you can get different types of hangars that might more closely resemble what it is you're trying to, to emulate. And then, of course, the last piece is you can always go and build your own, which I'll tell you from experience is very, very time-consuming. <laughs> And, you know, using libraries, again, if you, if, if all you really care about is, you know, you want to tell somebody you've got to install OpenScene X, then all you got to do is find the object and place it. That's all you need to do. If you're trying to do what I do, and let's say you want to get one out of, um, let's see, who else has, like R2 library, I think I use, sometimes use stuff. I don't know why it's in a different language here. But if I want to use this particular object, and this is the only object I'm going to use out of this library, I'll click and put it here so it's there, but then what I have to do is I have to go over to the resource in the, 
in the lower right hand side and I'll I'll actually put that resource in my airport object and I'll rename this path so that it knows where to find it. Okay, so that's a little bit on doing um, buildings. Again, I, I recommend that you use as much as possible the laminar, especially on your first couple airports. Use the laminar library when possible just because it makes it easier for everybody. Nobody has to install libraries. You don't have to try to copy stuff around. You just place it and go. Um, the other thing you can do then too, that's building. So aircraft is the same kind of deal. You just find aircrafts. You know, if you want to put an airliner there, I doubt you'd find this at, at Cape May, but you could put it there. You just, you know, choose it and click on it. Business jet. Um, you know, you can either choose, like for instance, this is a uh, air museum down in Cape May. So I probably would go and try to find a library that has maybe some aircraft similar to what they have down there and I would probably try to put them over top of this overlay um, just to match it up. You know, you don't have to do that because again, once you set the transparency of the of the taxiways and aprons to full or no transparency, you're not going to see everything that's underneath there. So, it's kind of up to you where you place airplanes. Um some other things that you can do just go over here and hope that I've been talking <laughs> well you can actually see wed when building your own building it is easy modeling is easy and fast texturing on their heather hand yes robo you are a hundred percent correct this uh, well the VR aviation building that I did that one took me a lot longer in all respects just because it was the first one I ever did the second one I did for somebody else it probably took I probably had 25 hours of total time in modeling that building I probably had about five hours in building the model and the other 20 hours was texturing <laughs> so yes if you want to do your own I could do a whole nother series on how you do that um, but it is time consuming and it's not very easy to do um, so anyway, so yes, try to use your own uh, use library objects as much as possible if if you're just trying to do something uh, reasonably quick. Um, so that's how you put in uh, airplanes, buildings. You can put in vehicles. You know, I'll put in like down here. I'll build a parking lot. I'll put the I'll put the vehicles there as much as possible. You know, this one is kind of busy. Some of the airports I've done. There's not a lot around the airport, so it's really up to your discretion how far out from the airport you go and how much you want to build and model. You know, in this particular one, when I'm done with it, I'll probably model. I'll probably model most. Oops, I want to do that. Most of what's within this green line, I'll probably extend this down here, and I'll probably model most of this. And then what I'll do is I'll just I'll cre I'll get the ortho. And I'll put that underneath here and include it with the package, and so that will that will give you ortho underneath for all of these other buildings, and then AutoGen with the next plane will also start to fill that in. But you know, again, it's kind of your personal preference. If you want to come down here and place each one of these houses, um, be my guest. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Um, okay, so I've been going on for about an hour and a half. I'll maybe just hit a couple other things here just to kind of give you just so you guys kind of understand and then you know if somebody wants to go and try it on their own it doesn't leave them hanging other things that you can put in here is you can put in textures and trees right so if we do that um, you can just click on the little forest icon over here and you can just start to outline your forest areas I won't do this whole one here, but I'll just give you an idea. You always have to close it, and once you close it, then you can actually go in and choose the type of trees that you want in there. Now, trees are a little bit more difficult because you don't really know. There really is no way to know for sure what that is. And so a lot of times what I'll do is, because the 3D, it doesn't always throw, throw the 3D representation in here, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just do, um, if 
I actually go to, so choosing this just chooses, I think, whatever the default forest type is for X-Plane. But if you actually go into, and I don't know why X-Plane, why the Laminar guys can't figure out a better way to name things, but it's actually in G8, I believe. You've got all these different types of forests. And so you kind of get an idea in the 3D view here what those forests are. And so if you find those and click and then go over here and create your forest, it will actually fill them in with that type of tree or that type of forest. But a lot of times what I'll do is just when I'm, I'll, I'll pick what I think is best and I'll just do a couple areas out here and then I'll load it up in X-Plane and go look at those forests just to make sure they kind of look like I'm, I'm looking, looking for. Yeah, so Ro Robo in the chat is is pointing out that they are broken into like broadleaf, hot, cold. I don't know what SP stands for, but so you can kind of get an idea of what the trees are as well by looking at the name. And I did actually, I found I found a, a guy that had done a, a custom scenery, and he basically went through each one of these and he put them in a little grid, so you could load up his scenery and then you could fly out there and you could like browse through a catalog of forests. Um, I don't know. Again, it's just kind of a, it's a personal preference on how much work and effort you want to put into it. I, you know, I try to get things looking as close as possible, so I'll, I'll put a little bit of effort into it once I get there. Um, so that's how you can do forests. Um, what are some of the other things here that might be useful here before I sign off for tonight? You can, you know, if you want a helipad, you can create one here. There's also helipad objects that I typically will use instead because they're modeled a little bit nicer. You've got your taxiways here that we talked about earlier. You've got your taxi lines. These can be any type of line. Again, once you draw a line, um, lines don't have to be closed. You can actually just click on your points and then hit enter. Once you draw the line, though, you can choose what type of line it is. So if you're drawing a road and you want a road line, you can put that in there. Um, a line is a line. It's just really about setting these attributes after, uh, um, after you're done. Um, yeah, you're right, Robo. Trees and forests, um, those are the big things that you typically see, especially in this airport because this is all forest up here. And so when you're flying into something, if you get the trees right, it really, it really does a, it really makes a big difference in how that airport looks, and then as well as getting, you know, you know, putting some of the little little details in, like cars and and delivery trucks and things like that. It just gives it uh, a much more realistic feel. So you've got lines, um, you've got holes here, and so holes uh, just briefly are are useful if I were to do a taxiway. So let's just say. Uh, I don't know if there's a good example here. I, there's been places where I've done taxiways. Let's just say I'm doing a, well, I just say I'm doing a tarmac, right? But in the middle, there's a green, a green flower bed or something. So what you can do is you can go create a hole in the middle of it, like that, and then you've you've just created, you cut a hole in your in your texture. That's what that's all about. Um, light fixtures, uh, that's not really particularly useful. I found all it really does is does pappy lights, and maybe vassy lights and stuff like that. So I don't really use that a lot. Signs, so I don't think this airport probably has, it's hard to tell if this airport has any kind of markings or signs. I will go in there and put signs in. So, you know, for instance, on this one, you would have a sign here it's the same kind of principle in terms of orientation. You can click the arrow. The arrow itself on the sign says what direction it's pointed. But if I click on it, then I can move it around and orient it. So I'll go and I'll put some signs here. And, you know, you go over here and you can choose the type of lettering that you use. And you put the stuff in there. So if you're not um, familiar with sign making, you probably want to Google what the different airport markings look like. But... You know, whether it's a taxiway or a runway um, marking or sign, you but you can put those in there. So that's what that does. This is just the airport beacon. There was already a beacon that was in the middle of nowhere. It's right here. 
but if you want to put an airport beacon you can put it there and uh, you know I'll put it probably next to the one of the the hangers when I'm done windsock is self-explanatory tower view I don't know if there was a tower view but if you want to put a tower view point in again you just click it and place it that gives you so when you do the view tower uh, from within X plane that's where that view is going to be from and I suppose you could put those in multiple places on the airport um, ramp starts these are obviously ramp starts right so you know you can put a ramp start there when you put a ramp start you do have to select what type of equipment it is you know and you can choose multiples although you can't do them all at once so if I want this to be a ramp start for turboprops and props then I'll just go in twice and select them that just helps I think when X-Plane is starting up and you're in a Cessna it'll show you this this start point if it was a helicopter pad it probably wouldn't show you that start point unless you're in a helicopter um, and again you can orient it how you want to orient it you can custom name it so it shows up you know if I just say VR aviation hangar or ramp start this is what shows up in X-Plane when you're choosing your ramp starts Um, you can check the size. I'm not sure of what you do with airlines. So that's how you can set that. Um, boundaries, again, what you typically want to do is you want to outline the airport with an airport boundary, just so when you do um, flatten, mostly so when you do flatten, it knows where to flatten the, the, um, flatten the, uh, the airport. The equipment type only affects the auto generated traffic, doesn't it? I'm not sure if it if it's auto generated or if or, or when you choose. I know if you don't choose an equipment type, it won't let you export the model. <laughs> so you always have to choose something. But yeah, I'm not sure what effect it has on it. To be honest with you, Robo. Um, ATC. This is about this is about um, creating routes. So taxi lines are here, and that's up in this area ATC routes you use if you want to create taxi routes for airplanes or or fuel trucks and again once you create it you have to kind of give it some sort of you gotta tell it what you're gonna do with it whether it's aircraft or ground trucks and you can select one way and stuff like that I don't and typically in mine I don't do taxi routes for aircraft and so real world or if you put in AI aircraft, it probably is, I don't know, might not work very well because there's no taxi routes. I usually just do ground trucks, so when I do a fuel truck, it follows a route. Um, when we were watching a stream earlier with Bambino, he flew into the into um, Burt Mooney Airport out in Montana, and I, I did that, or I modified that. Somebody else had done the... Uh, initial airport and then I modified it and put the VR aviation hangar but I put in taxi routes for the fuel trucks and unfortunately I must have a taxi route now, the fuel trucks take a little bit of leeway with taxi routes and they were actually going through the hangar so <laughs> I need to go back and modify the taxi routes to give them enough kind of radius to do turning but but anyway that's how you do that you can do taxi routes um, you know the objects I don't really use the button much because I'm not sure what happens if you just put an object there I don't know what object that was but typically when I'm placing objects I go over here and actually select the object same with facades same with trees really um, strings uh, these are just for kind of generating generic lines of something that you want to uh, to show up I don't really use those a whole lot. Uh, lines, kind of the same thing. A lot of these I don't actually use down here. Polygons, you can actually use this to drape textures over things. So if you, you know, had something here that you wanted to look a particular way, you could use you could draw a polygon around there and then assign a texture to it. Exclusion zones, um, these are actually kind of important, so we'll talk about those before I sign off. Exclusion zones tell X-Plane not to auto-generate things in certain areas. So 
I know I've been to a lot of autogen airports that you'll come and land and there'll be a tree in the middle of the runway or there'll be power lines right off the end of the runway. Um, so what you do is you, in order to control that, is you would create an auto or an exclusion zone. And you can tell then once you create the exclusion zone, you go down here and you tell it what you want to exclude. So, you know, sometimes if you're seeing trees where you don't want them, I mean, that one's obvious, you just choose forests. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, like power lines. I don't know, for, for whatever reason, it's, a lot of airports I fly into have these high tension power lines right off the end of the runway, which obviously would not happen in real life, um, not at least that close. So sometimes you have to kind of try to figure out what it is that's generating that. And it's not always, you know, if you've got a power line that goes through here, you can't just draw the line there and have it exclude that chunk. It actually has to include one of the vertices of the object being, being um, auto-genned. So there's a little bit of playing around with exclusion zone to get them to work, but uh, fundamentally, you know, what, you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to tell X-Plane not to draw something in a certain area. So, you know, for instance, down here, I would probably exclude this area and say I don't want objects here, and I don't want forests either, because I don't want X-Plane trying to auto-gen a building if I'm going to put a building here, right? So... That's kind of how you use those, and you have to, you know, it, it's a little bit of back and forth when you create it, you export it, you load it in X-Plane, you go and look, and you say, oh, crap, there's trees growing out of the top of this building, so I need to auto, you know, I need to exclude trees from that area. Or, hey, uh, uh, X-Plane put a building right uh, in the middle of my parking lot, right? So that's what that's kind of about. And then the last two things we'll talk about here is just um, truck parking. So you can choose a truck parking area, and that puts a fuel truck, and then your fuel truck, you can choose the different types of fuel truck you want it to be. And really the difference, or you can do crew cars or baggage cars, and it'll actually change the, you know, the icon for that. Fuel trucks for jets are a lot larger than the fuel trucks for props. And when you put a fuel truck in, you also have to give fuel truck destinations. So you have to tell it, I want it to stop there, I want it to stop here, and I want it to stop here. And of course, destinations, you have to assign which truck you want at that destination. And then finally, going back to the taxi lines, then you also have to have a taxi line that kind of follows that as well, so that the truck can get there. So in terms of creating dynamic objects on the ground, it's really kind of a three-step process. One, you have to create the object or the, the vehicle, the truck. Two, you have to tell it where you want the truck to stop and assign it to that type of vehicle. And then thirdly, you have to give it a taxi line that's assigned to um, ground vehicles um, so that it knows where to follow. Whew. Well, I'm out, I'm, I think I'm out of alcohol here, so that must mean I'm going to have to stop. Um, so the last thing, just, you know, again, so if somebody wants to use this tutorial and actually go out and start to build something that's useful, once you place all your stuff, and my guess is, is mine is going to fail here at this point because I was just kind of randomly generating stuff all over the place. This, this one's going to complain about. Um... Once you get all of your stuff in place, of course, you have to save it. And then you also have to export it. So right now, it's just a, it's just an X, a big XML file in, in the custom scenery. So if I actually go look, um, let's see, can I do this quick? Um, let me do this. Change this to, no. Yeah. I'm just trying to s let you see my... Huh. Yeah, maybe I can't do that. Okay, well... Let me try adding another source. Just one second. Window capture. We'll call this Explorer. Okay, and we want 
There we go. Okay. So if you look in your custom scenery folder, so again, when we first created this in WED, it, it created a KWWD directory in, in your custom scenery. There's nothing here but a bunch of XML, right? So all we've done so far is really define where everything is, I guess, it, what, what the objects are and where they are. To actually make it into an airport that you can use in uh, X-Plane, you have to export it. So you can do uh, export to export scenery pack. If you're going to try to upload it into back into the scenery gateway for X-Plane, there's a couple of caveats. One is you cannot use third-party libraries, so you can only use the Laminar libraries. I guess is really the only caveat. <laughs> um, since we are going to use um, custom objects here, we just going to export the scenery pack, so you have to do that. And what it does is it does some validations, right? So it's telling me that there's a bunch of things wrong with my airport, so it's not going to export it. And so could we fix those quickly? Let's see, airport has ground or delivery but no tower. Add a control tower frequency or remove it. Okay, so I guess I should let you guys see what's going on here. Probably make more sense. Oh. And you can't see my validation result. There we go. Okay. So that's the validation result that you get. Yeah, thanks Robo for joining. Um, appreciate it. Um, so this is the validation report that you're getting and it's telling you all of the things that are wrong. Um, this one doesn't have a lot of things that are wrong so maybe we can quickly um, fix them. So the airport has no ground or delivery as ground or delivery frequencies but no tower. So okay so what we need to do is go into we we'll just go up to ATC and we'll actually have to, I wondered about this when we were going through it, we'll just have to delete the clearance and approach because there is no tower and save it and then we can try to export it again. Now it's telling us that the truck destination new service truck must have at least one truck type selected. So when I put these service, uh, I didn't choose a truck, so I have to choose, um, we'll just choose props, 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 just so we can get through this. So let me save it and try to export it again. Okay, now the only thing is left is we've got a warning that the airport is all uppercase. I'm not sure why it complains about that because most of them I've seen are all uppercase, so it's a warning. You don't need to really worry about it too much. But if we look at our Explorer, now we have an EarthNav da directory. So if you've downloaded any custom scenery, you know that they always have EarthNav data, and it's going to have a whole bunch of um, DSF files in there that actually control um, this is what X-Plane actually uses to um, to render that airport. Whew. So, at this point, you've made it through creating an airport and exporting an air airport. And then, of course, the last thing, and this is this is an iterative process, typically, is you got to start X-Plane up and check it out, and then you go back and tweak it within WED, fix things, check it out, reload the scenery and explain. So we'll do that. I guess I'll do that reasonably quickly. See my viewership is dwindling, but there seems to be one person hanging on, so I appreciate you hanging in there. Again, we could spend literally days continuing to go through this ad nauseum, uh, but nobody wants to do that. All right, so in X-Plane, let me just create a quick X-Plane window here. Window capture X-Plane. And there we go. 
So next plane, we just do a new flight. And again, since it's already in the custom directory, um, let me just choose the... One seventy two, and we can do KWWD, Cape May County. There's your airport now, should show up. Um, start our flight, and we can look around it quick just to see these few objects that we put in there. Make sure they're there. Oh, there's another windsock down here that I'm not sure why that's there. I think by default, when X plane is auto generating uh, airports it just puts generically puts a windsock at the end of each runway um, while we're waiting for X-Plane to load one last thing I'll point out here is again back to the groupings so one one gotcha is that a lot of time you got to be a little careful so if I click into this grouping and then start creating objects it's going to put them in that group so you have to be a little bit thoughtful especially as you start like trees right when I go and start placing individual trees if I'm not careful it'll put them all in a place that I forget where they're at and so it's usually a good idea to put one object of a type. So if I do that, let's just say I want a tree. I can search for objects, do a generic tree object. When I put it there, then what you can do is once that object is placed, you can um, go up to edit and make it a group. Or you can do control G. You can rename that. I call it vegetation. I'll put trees and bushes in there and then you can actually move that out of that group and put it up somewhere else and you'll notice that when we created all these service trucks in this exclusion zone it just kind of randomly put them wherever it <laughs> felt like so typically some of the cleanup you need to do is go in and you know group these things together and you can shift click and select multiple things create a group and put them in the hierarchy as appropriate uh, but you do need to be a little bit careful about that. Not sure what X plane is doing here, but it's not doesn't appear to be loading real well. Uh, but yeah, you do need to be a little bit careful about that. It's probably not so bad when you're just testing and and um, and and validating things. But certainly, once you export it and you want to upload it to the org store, for instance, you're going to want to make sure that all of that stuff is is uh, relatively ordered and grouped as appropriate. Okay, well we're just waiting for explain to do something. I think it actually crashed here, so let me try one more time. Close the program, Let's start it up again. It actually opened, oh, I know why it opened up a second window, because of my uh, G530. Alright, again we're going to do a new flight, Cape May, start it. Like we might have one person left in the in the stream, but if there's any questions from that one person, feel free to hit me up in chat. While we're waiting for uh, explain to load up here. So yeah, I mean. Uh, you know, again, it's not it's not particularly difficult to create these airports. It's uh, 
it's it's just really more time consuming than anything because you you know if you if you really want to do a good job that attention to detail um, you know Robo pointed it out earlier in the chat that you know making sure that the trees look right you know making sure that there are some details here that that give it some texture um, fences tree lines you know even individual trees like I'll go and you know I won't just define this area as a forest I'll actually go out and put a whole bunch of individually placed trees right so it makes it look you know that more realistic you know making sure that you you know if you're going to model this area making sure you put this pathway in here and making sure you put parking lines and things like that you know all of that stuff really lends to you know a good immersion once you finally um, start flying in there and, and granted you know when you land you're never going to be taxing around in this area over here but you know certainly when you're coming in for landing and takeoff you're going to see that and you know just having a flat landscape around here with all of a sudden a runway and some buildings even if you put ortho in there it's going to look a little funky so you know it's always good to spend a little bit of extra time you know put these buildings put these tanks in here you know put the trees in there you know try to do as much as you can um, to really make it look you know as, as realistic as it should okay so x plane started up so let's just jump out real quick and just take a quick look around so here's the airliner that I just randomly planted on the ground there but you know you'll see we've got you know we've got a good start to it we've got you know we've got a runway we've got the markings on it we've got the end lights we've got runway lights there's uh, it's hard to see the trees that I define because X-Plane is auto genning them pretty well but here's the tarmac that I put out there in the middle of nowhere with the hole in it we've got uh, I guess that's the uh, the windsock, but we got the taxiway we created with the taxi lights on it. You know, we've got the second runway. You know, so it's coming together. You know, for a, a quick and dirty tutorial of how to do an airport, you know, we made some pretty good progress here. It helped that a lot of this stuff was already defined. You'll see down in this area, X plane is auto generating this area, and um, I think because it's because I had set the airport boundary out in this area I think that's why there's probably it's just kind of shown as a field and it's not actually trying to show any houses or buildings underneath there um, but it did auto generate the roads so some of that stuff you don't have to manually go in and place you know our, our haphazardly placed uh, hangar is here Right, your the airplanes that we put there are there. If we zoom in, our fuel truck is down here. I don't know why it's not moving around, but in any case, that's kind of the that's kind of the basics of uh, of what one has to do to get uh, to get an airport built. So yeah, from here on out, it's just a matter of continuing to go into wed and you know updating. You know, updating the uh, updating the scenery, exporting it, making sure to to fix any errors that show up, making sure you've got your groupings and stuff, the hierarchy and the groupings set right. Exporting it, you can uh, within X Plane you can just do reload the scenery. It makes it go a little bit faster than restarting X Plane every time, and it's just kind of an iterative iterative uh, iterative iterative. Uh, I can't say it. <laughs> It's a process. Let's just put it that way. So anyway, so I think I'm going to call it a night. I think I've talked long enough. I've bored everybody right out of the stream. Uh, but hopefully uh, those that were in the stream learned something today. Anybody that watches it after the fact, hopefully it gives you some pointers as to how you could approach doing some uh, airport design. Uh, perhaps as I work on this further, I'll do other streams and we'll go into some other other details but that's it that at a high level is how you do it and I hope hope it was useful so with that I think I'm gonna go ahead and sign off thanks for uh, watching um, and uh, if you're viewing this after the fact I'd encourage you to uh, to uh, 
like my uh, Twitch channel so you can uh, see when I do other streaming. I do streaming on uh, flying in VR. I do st um, do some iRacing. And I also have a YouTube channel um, that you can check out. It's M9 Aviation as well. And I've got a lot of videos there, both uh, virtual and uh, real life flying. So hope to see you all guys there. Thanks again, and uh, we'll see you next time around.